Hello there, I'm Sir Fancy, and in this tutorial I will show you how to create shotgun in VR in Unreal Engine with help of VR expansion plugin. Behind me you can already see how it will look like, so let's not waste your time and get to work. Alright, let's get started. First of all, we have to look at our assets, because you need to have prepare your models to work with VR. I will of course leave you with FBX that you can download and import and use these models, but if you want to create your own, I will also explain how it needs to be set up. So first of all, these models need to be separate in three different, you need to have shells as separate separate model because it will just be spawning from here, uh, well from here, not important, then shotgun that will work as a body of that gun and of course your shotgun thing that moves, I have no idea how it is called honestly and I should have probably learned it before to recording, not important. The important is that it's center of origin which, which is this orange dot which you can set by set origin right here to geometry needs to be right in the middle of it otherwise it will move the completely differently than you want it. And it needs to be separate because we will want to move it independently from your mesh. And of course all of these origins needs to be set to mesh. But if you are going to use assets that I will provide you, this all will be already set up. I'm just explaining in case that you are making your own shotgun, which you probably are, let's be real. Now in Unreal Engine I'm using template from VR expansion plugin, so if you don't know what this is about, uh, you have video somewhere here where it explains what VR expansion plugin is and why you actually really need to use it for VR development. But uh, let's ignore that thing and let's just import here that asset. You just need to put that FBX in here and it will import all of the models. Alright, I set up just simple materials so the shotgun actually looks like an actual shotgun and now if you look in the game it should look pretty well. So let's set up it as an actual shotgun here in the game. So first of all let's make sure that we save everything because you always have to save all, trust me, you really need to. And the next thing is to create blueprint and we will use preset for here from Unreal Engine template. Let's find here gun and here we have gun base. So let's duplicate it and call it shotgun underscore bp and now let's just click on this little icon uh, source panel and connect and put it in the content browser content folder all right let's open that and change it completely there is a lot of things that we won't need so let's start by changing visuals we will take our shotgun static mesh and switch it for our shotgun uh, i believe zero two was it yeah, we have here our shotgun 02. And actually before that, let's make sure that we have the right collisions around that. If you look at, well, it won't really matter with this one, but let's make sure that we have it correctly. If you click on collisions, simple collisions, you can see that collisions need to match it pretty well because we will be simulating physics with it. This one seems pretty good, but let's look at our shotgun that won't probably be that well. And look at that, that's not really what I want. I need to have something much more precise, so let's click on collisions, auto convex collision, and let's let's put it up a little bit. Just add those rookie numbers, then click on apply, and that should do the job. And it looks much better. All right, a few things that we don't need, for example, this button and this virtual stock. Let's delete that. Yep, it will give us some errors, but we can just delete those as well. We won't need that. Then let's get rid of this VR slider, we will create our own and then text looks pretty worthless as well, it gives us another error, let's look at that, that's just setting the text, let's delete that whole function. And now if we look at our static mesh you can see that this hand, which is how your hand will look like when you actually pick it up, is completely wrong, you definitely don't want to hold it here. So let's try to match it to how it would look like in real life. You can move all fingers with rotation, etc, etc, and just find it. It will be probably better if you disable snapping. Alright, that's pretty poor work, but it will work for now. Anyway, I would usually now test it in VR and test what happens, blah blah blah, but for this tutorial I will do it on the end and most things will happen just right here in uh, behind the computer because it gets kind of tiresome when you always have to put your headset up and down. Anyway, now we will have to use fire location because that's what uh, is used to spawn your bullet. And we don't want it to be up here, we want to be it right here. And let's see if we can test it. So what we can do is to basically get rid of all of these. We don't need that. And we also don't need this one. And let's just connect it after true fire gun local. 
and after fire gun local the only thing you want to do is to fire blood uh, what uh, let me just quickly explain before that this timer basically does that as, lo as long as you are holding your gun that's why it is here fire right it will keep firing bullet that's why it, ha why it has a timer here but we want to only shoot once once you put once you press the trigger so let's delete all that and fire it only once yeah this has actually useless function we don't have to have it here but let's let's just leave it for now if you want to simplify it you don't need to do this mid step all right and to make sure that it works let's create here event begin play and what i want to do after event, event begin play is doing exactly this fire gun local and let's do it in and let's do it a few times so fire gun local then delay just a short one about one second and then do it again just to see how everything works so let's put a chunk shotgun in the game and if you click on this arrow you can click on simulate and you can see that your shotgun is shooting pretty well if you rotate it it shoots just as it should that's wonderful but now it's shooting just like a weird but one shotgun that, that's pretty much useless this is not a shotgun this is a weird pistol water pistol i would even say so let's rework it that it actually shoots like a shotgun so if you look at our code right here you can see that it spawns our first bullet right here and it takes a location where it should spawn from our fire location so what we will basically do is to randomize the rotation of that fire location what the uh, what that will cause is that the line where the bullet should travel will be always a bit different for each of these bullets. So let me quickly show you how to how to do that. Well, first of all, we will spawn several of them. So let's put here four loop, just four loop, not for each loop, and we will do it nine times. Let's uh, set a zero to nine, uh, zero to nine, which means ten times. So now let's look at that. We have our transform taken from here. Click on Alt and left click right here. That should destroy it. And what you want to do is split structure pin right here and connect it on location. And let's leave rotation like that because we will also split that. Let's move it a bit back down. Again, split structure pin. And if we look at our rotation, let's see how we want to rotate it. So if you look at our fire collision, let's see how we want to rotate it. If you click on E, it will switch to rotation. So what you want to do is to basically rotate it along Y axis and along Z axis. So that means that our X axis will stay as it is. That's fine. And with our Y and Z, we want to add something to it. So let's set, to set, let's set it to plus, so float plus float. And do the same thing for our Z rotation. Let's move it a bit back so it's even more readable for you. Connect it right here. And now we will just simply add here float in range. So let's add here float in range, which should be uh, somewhere here. Float in range, random float in range. And let's go between 0, minus 5 to 5. And let's do the same thing in here. So it will add minus 5 to 5 on spawning rotation of this. This basically depends on the spread. If you want to have much higher spread, you can set it to minus 10 to 10 or minus 20 to 10 to 20, but that would be really huge. I think that minus 5 to 5 would be pretty good. Let's see. Then we have to do a few more changes because now if we play it, it will just spawn. It will just create a lot of bugs. Let's say it like that. All right. So first of all, let's connect our scale because we are changing it right here in scale the fire locations cutting down and we want to have it even uh, smaller. So let's let's do 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2. That should help a little bit and our collision handling override. We need to do something with that. And what we'll probably do is to set try to adjust location but always spawn. Let's see what it will do. If we slow it down now, let's skip a few frames. You can see that they are still spawning a bit too big. So let's see if we can do something with that. The problem is how it is set, how is our first person projectile set up. So let's open that thing. And what we will probably have to do is to get rid of collision here. So right now, let's just switch it to no collisions just to test it. No collisions that should work pretty well. And look at that. Now it's actually shooting it like a real shotgun. Maybe it has a bit too big spread, but let, let's try to make it bigger. Let's say that you want to have like super high spread. So for that, you have to set it to 
minus 10 to 10. And let's say that you wanna increase how much it is shooting. Set it to first index to 9 and last index to about 30. Uh, that's gonna be huge. I'm a bit afraid that it will lag my computer, but we will see about that. And yeah, you can see that it works as a shotgun pretty well. But that's not what we are here for, right? We want it to be much smaller and that spread also a bit lower. So let's do the minus 3 to 3. And the same thing here. I think that you can use just a one random float in range. Actually, for both of them, they will always randomize, ge randomly generate it. But I haven't tested it, so probably I will use two here, just to be sure. You can test it and let me know in comments. All right, I would say that shooting power of it is pretty much done. If you want work, if you want to work with this first-person projectile, which is the thing that we are spawning right here, you have to probably adjust this collision component if you want to simulate physics. It's a bit harder to do because a lot of these collisions will collide with each other. So you can set it up that it will simulate physics only, let's say, one second after it will shot or something like that. Uh, but you usually don't need it because if you are shooting from shotgun, you usually don't want your ammo to be bouncing around after that. It's much easier to do it with some VFX or something like that. All right, and now let's get to actually reloading it with that thing. Just a quick thing before that, if you are interested in stuff and games that I make in VR, I make a new VR game every week. You can watch my Instagram, somewhere here is links. Uh, here you can see what I'm doing usually. So hey, just uh, drop that a follow if you are interested. And now let's stop wasting your time and get back to it. So in shotgun, let's set up here new static mesh. So add component static mesh and that static mesh will be of course our shotgun 01 and let's put it somewhere here and now we need to do one more thing and that's our VR slider that will let us move it. So let's put here VR slider and let's add to it some mesh so let's say just a cube will be fine something like that well that's a way too big cube but we can use that let's scale it down and make sure that it fits approximately our shotgun moving thing. I should have a really research how it is called. Let me know if you know it. All right, and I don't want it to be visible. So let's go into search and set here hidden in game and set it to true. All right, now you can see that we will be moving it along Y axis. So let's switch it. Max slider side X, let's leave to zero and Y to 10. And to see if it actually works, let's set up here a simple shotgun shell that will fall from here and be simulated on the ground and blah blah blah. So for that, let's let's actually use this pickup key. Whoop, that's my favorite thing to copy. So let's find it in, comp in content. So find here pickup cube. Let's duplicate it and call it shotgun shell underscore bp. Uh, now you have to again find it in search. And let's put it into content, blah, blah, blah. And let's just find it here and set it to shotgun shell. If you click on your static mesh component, let's set it to shotgun shell. A bit small, but let's set scale to one, one, one. And if we put it right here in the game, we should see it sim be simulating physics right on the start. So if you click on play, you can see it's falling down. That's wonderful, because now what we will do simply with our shotgun once our slider hits the point which means scroll down and find here on slider hit point set, click on plus button you just want to create a spawn actor from class and that will be oh we of course need to have a reference for that my bad my bad my bad my bad let's ignore that <laughs> deselect it and right here we will have to find a reference for that so let's quickly add here an arrow add component arrow and put it somewhere here approximately in this hall because from here it should be spawning so now back in event graph you can connect on slider hit point take your arrow get world transform and connect it right here and of course as our class let's set up shotgun shell before we will jump in VR, let's get rid of these shooting functions right here, which we have set up on Event Begin Play, because now we will be able to actually shoot. All right, right here it looks all fine. If I grip it, it looks pretty well. And if I shoot, it shoots like a shotgun. Wonderful. 
I can grab it here and it actually works but our thing doesn't follow so let's switch them but you can see the shells spawn from here and fall down so quick fix for that is in shotgun bp you have to simply take it needs to be the other way around of course you need to take your vr slider put it under static mesh and then our static mesh put under vr slider so right now if you move with your vr slider it will move static mesh as well yeah and it's moving in the opposite direction then i want it and it's moving a bit too little so let's see what we can do with that what you can do is go in vr slider and play with these units with max slide and minimum slide distance but honestly i found that it's usually easiest just to rotate it about 180 degrees on z axis which will cause it to be rotated right here and let's try to increase max slide distance let's try 15 and do here one more thing what we want to do on our slider let's put here a branch and I want it to happen only once so when slider progress is on zero current uh, is on one actually current uh, current value is zero which means it that means it's right here and once it will be right here or on that 15 units you want it to uh, go in our branch so let's make sure that this thing is equal to one connect it right here compile all right let's see you can see that i can move it and those 15 units were way too much but i can reload and if i reload only when i actually reload and put it back here it will spawn this thing and the other thing is that it's letting go every time i hit it which is not exactly what i want so let's change that as well so first of all in our vr slider let's get back it to 10 and i would actually go maybe even with 8 and one more thing, let's make sure that you have to reload after every shot. So after you fire a bullet right here, oh actually fire gun local right here. What I want is to put here a simple branch that will ask whether some condition is true. So let's just call it can shoot. And by default it will be true. And after you shoot it, it will set it to false. And every time you reload, you will set it to true again. Just simple condition like that. All right, looks pretty good. If I try to shoot now, nothing happens. But if I put it back, okay, and back again, it will shoot it. And now again, I can shoot until I reload again. Wonderful. I would probably still decrease that random float. Let's set it to minus do 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 blah 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 and one more thing i will do is to increase velocity in, in our first person projectile so if you go into first person projectile it by default its velocity is 3000 let's try 450 you have to set it to initial speed maximum speed and also uh, where is it on velocity x right here and when we are in our VR slider, you can change how far you have to have your hand from it to let go. And I would do it in this case. But there should be VR, a VR grip interface. And in here you can set break distance. Let's set it to 250. But these are more of a gameplay thing. So we have to test it and change it for your own game. Alright, that's about it. I hope that you learned something. A huge thank you to everyone on my Patreon because it would be really hard to do this without you. And if you want project files for this, they are also for and uh, they are also in my Patreon, so you can download them here. So that's it. See ya around, Sarfancy out.